Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm doing a quick painting guide for a Ronin who is going to be my ranger for my new Rangers of Shadow Deep Warband. The miniature I'm using is from an out of production game called Anima Tactics, and this particular character is called Chubasa Kurokami. He is a Ronin who wears red armor, so I wanted to paint him up in red armor trying to stick a little bit close to how he appears in Anima Tactics so for when I use him in that game but also kind of doing his own thing a little bit for Rangers of Shadow Deep. So I've base coated in black and now I'm going to apply a coat of Screamer Pink over the top. I've slightly thinned it down and I'm going to apply two coats and I'm going over everything even the skin and the hair and the weapons. You will notice here that in addition to his katana, he has a wakuzashi on the back of the miniature. I'm actually going to remove that in a moment because it makes it easier to paint, so that will vanish in the next shot. Once those coats are applied, we're switching to Mephiston Red, and I'm going to apply a coat of Mephiston Red over his armor plating. He's got armored shoulder plates, um, there's some armor around his neck. I'm also going to apply it on the sheath for the katana, making sure I get good coverage. One coat should be enough with Mephiston Red. And I'm applying it here as well to this section of fabric at the front, which has some nice detailing on it. Now I'm switching to Red Tone, and the reason I'm doing this is I want to knock down that Screamer Pink so it's uh, more red burgundy than actually pink, and also to enrich the Mephiston Red as well, and to bring out the detail, bring out the shading without making it look all grungy and dirty as you would with something like Agrax Earthshade. So I'm going to apply this over the whole miniature. You don't want it pooling too much but I'm not being overly fussy as long as everything is covered. With that done I'm going back to Screamer Pink and what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin it right down and I'm also going to put in a couple of drops of red tone and then I'm gradually going to build up uh, layers of that over the most raised areas of his clothing just to help define the details and to uh, make nicer transitions between um, the more heavily shaded recesses and those raised details. I'm then switching to Evil Sun Scarlet. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to apply it to the edges of the fabric on the front of the miniature. I'm also going to edge all of the individual red plates on his armor. So those shoulder plates going down his arm, um, the armor on his sides, and also um, the edge of the sheath. And then I'm switching to Wild Rider Red, and I'm just going to put that on the detailing on the fabric at the front and also on the very corners of the edges of the armor plating for little edge highlighting on those corners. For the flesh, we're using Cadian Flesh Tone and I'm just going to apply this carefully over the hands and the face. There's not actually a lot of flesh on this particular miniature because of his clothing, but it's the two hands and then the face as well. Just being careful not to get it over any armor and clothing that's already painted. Of course, we're then switching to Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'm going to apply that over all of those skin areas just to add definition, to knock down the brightness of the skin tone. And then we're switching to Lead Belcher, and this is just for the sword and the hilt of the sword. Because he's actually drawing his katana, you can't see much of the blade, so there's not a lot of silver on this miniature. And again, just being careful not to accidentally touch any of the clothing or armor that has already been painted. Next, we're switching to Dawnstone, and this is to apply onto the hilt of the katana. Just being very careful not to get it over the hands, which are done at this point. And then we're going to switch to Nuln Oil, and we're going to apply Nuln Oil over the handle of the katana, and then over the blade itself. 
just to knock down the shininess of it all and to help define the leather strapping on the on the hilt of the sword and generally bring out those details. Being careful, of course, not to splodge it all over areas where we don't want it. Next, we're going back to Dawnstone and Chubasa has white hair in Anima Tactics. I didn't want to go for full white hair here, so I'm putting two thin down coats of Dawnstone over the hair first, and we're gonna make it sort of a, a grayish, whitish color perhaps resembling how um, he has encountered some terrifying things in the Shadow Deep. And then of course, because we can't have a painting guide without Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to apply Agrax Earthshade to the hair. Just being careful not to apply too much and not to have too much pooling. While that's drying, we're going to use some sterling mud on the base. I'm going to splodge that inside the lip of the base. And that's all I'm really doing for the base on this miniature. I'll apply some static grass once it has been varnished. And then while the base is drying, the very last thing to do is a dry brush of Corax White over the hair. Obviously being careful not to accidentally hit any of the armor or anything else, but that's it. This is a really simple paint job. So with that dry brush done, I'm calling that a done miniature. All it will need is Abaddon black around the base and then a coat of varnish. Once the varnish is dry, I will add some static grass to it. And then that miniature is completely finished and ready for use in Rangers of Shadow Deep and also in my games of Anima Tactics. It's very quick, very simple. It doesn't have all the detailing on it that the actual um, Chewbacca character from Anima Tactics has. He has lots of hand detailing on his clothing, which I didn't want to get into that. I just wanted a nice, clean, quick paint job. And I'm quite happy with this one. Hopefully some people have found it interesting. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.